Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. Today, it is colder than a pimp's heart. But, it's not so cold in my heart. I want to show you guys, one of the most common questions I get about LS swaps, or that I see about LS swaps, is people thinking that you have to, like, somehow completely merge this harness with this harness, or that harness, or that harness. Or that harness. Um, I want to show you how to make your gauges work with your swap. And this is for any vehicle in the world. I'm going to use the ones that I have here on hand as examples. This is Daryl. Daryl's got a very basic set of gauges. It's actually a deluxe set for a for a square body, but this is what Daryl has: is fuel, speedometer, oil pressure, voltmeter, and temperature. Right, those are the things that you care about the most um, while you're going down the road. Toyota has basically the same, different configuration. That truck doesn't have anything but idiot lights. Um, same with the Dodge. But as long as you remember that the senders don't care what engine they're in, you're in pretty good shape. And basically, all you do is take all of your senders and adapt them to the LS stuff. So, back to the LS engine, that's your oil port. This is the rear of the intake. It's right down there. It's easy to see right now. You pull this out, the PCM does not need it. You take it out. I believe that's an M14 fitting, but I'll put the size up on the screen exactly. You adapt it to your oil filter or oil pressure sending unit size. Daryl literally has the same can that's on this thing. The same can with one single tab sticking off of it. Um, this on that 350 in the K20. It doesn't matter if it's this Toyota. Whatever your sending unit is. Let's see if I can get you back there. Um, there it is. You adapt your sending unit to the oil threads on this one and that's it you're done and you're you just keep your gauge wire you just hook it right back up take your sending unit out of your old engine and put it in the ls uh on the side of the cylinder head coolant temp sensor so if you have a gm this one's a two wire uh if you have a gm you can do a cool trick and you can use an ls1 Sender, which Daryl has, does it? Did I change it? Let me get you in there. I don't think Daryl has a three. You can use a three wire sending unit from a 99 Camaro. Um, and then one wire will go to the PCM. The LS does need to see the PCM or the coolant temp sensor, and the other wire goes to your gauge. So, now you've got, we've got our temp, and we've got our oil pressure. What do we do about our volts? That's pretty easy. You hook your voltmeter wire up to your alternator on the stud, on the back, right there. Ta-da! Right there. These gauges are taken care of. These, if you have a TAC, the LSPCM or the Holly will put out a correct signal for a four, six, or eight cylinder TAC. You just have to tell it. That only leaves one thing, your speedometer, which in your tune, if you have an electronic speedometer, it's very easy. In your tune, you tell it how many pulses per mile you need. With this 91 cluster, it already works from the 4L80. It's literally what it was designed for. On that, my speedometer would work because it has a turbo 400 and it has a gear and I would just put that 5.3 right in front of that turbo 400 and I have a speedometer still, no problems. Um, where you get a little sketchy and a little tricky is if we decided we wanted a 4L80 in here 
we don't have and we have the mechanical i can't find a 91 speedometer i don't want to pay for it then you have to get like a gear generator box and they're kind of expensive dakota sells them i think jared's that run sells them they're a few hundred bucks and they're kind of not worth it in my opinion at that point what i would do what i did with the toyota is uh one of these ebay gps boat speedometers this one's digital but they make them they make them with a needle a swept needle just like a normal gauge you can't tell them apart it would fit right in a square body dash um they they have a little lag when you start up but otherwise they work fine and that's what i would do um that's it that's it for your gauges if you have any questions let me know down below real easy doesn't have to be very complicated doesn't need an hour long video hope that helps you guys let me know what kind of gauges you're trying to hook up that i didn't cover thanks for watching we'll see you next time on the driveway engine